hello and welcome to day 25 of the 40 day fast and uh, today is Thursday January 26th 2012 Thursday January 26 2012 today I had quiet practice so I went to that and um, I did, I did my walk early this morning with my son, so all of that got accomplished, thanks be to God, and um, right now it's about 11 o'clock at night, I'm trying to do this last, yes, I've been working on, and, uh, on my Facebook page, putting a picture of all students that I used to have in there, it's been kind of fun, you know, meeting with all students from the past, but it's, it's, a, it's amazing, you know, I, uh, I'm seeing, uh, I'm, I'm, when I was teaching uh, way back there in 1993, because those are the, the pictures I'm putting up, I was really big. I was like maybe 340, you know, approaching the 358 that I told you was the biggest. And uh, so I'm looking at all those pictures and these people, all the students are very skinny little guys there. And now that I've seen them have grown up, it's kind of interesting to see that I'm smaller than them now. And I was thinking, wow. You know, amazing what God does. I mean, like I said, I, I'm down to 142 right now. Size 28 pants, 122. Thank be to the glory of God. Never in my life have I, I have been this size that I can make memory of, you know. Because I, like I, I said before I have always been chubby my whole life and it's until now that I'm in my 50s I'm 52 years of age right now 52 and now I'm in my 50s I, I became a normal weight person category person thanks be to the glory of God so I can say he guided me you know I the only thing I trusted and followed has been the structures of the word and to say to God I'm gonna just trust what your word has to tell me just by basically saying that, he has brought me here to a place in my life where I would never thought I would have arrived. You know, most people, once they have their, their pant sizes past 34 or, you know, 32 or 36, they, they think they're never going to go back to that, to that waist, waist size, you know. And, uh, and that's true. If you're not going to listen to words and follow the instructions, you know, of how to eat, because everything needs instruction. You need, you need to be instructed on how to eat for everything. You need to be instructed on, on how to stand. You need to have the right posture. Everything. You need to be taught everything, you know. But sadly to say, a lot of things are not being taught. And the love of words has just been forgotten. And the Bible clearly says, the respect for words, the fear of the Lord, because the Lord is the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. The respectful word is the beginning of wisdom. Okay? So, when we don't respect words the way they should be respected, then we fall prey to ignorance and all kinds of stupidity. Right? Roams the land. We are easily prey to that. We go blindly into the path of stupidity without even, without even thinking. Okay? But we're going to get right into the the theme of this fast that has been uh, your Jesus sucks, my Jesus rules. And explaining the, the way in which the word has been portrayed and been used. Uh, remember the word, the word was the element, or, or rather the person, his son, is the element by which God created all things in creation. The Bible says that by his word he sustains them. You know, everything is sustained in place. You know, that was very hard to understand now, but now that we have computer, we understand that the pixels on the monitor are being sustained in place. You know, the pixels are the little flashes of light that create all the different pictures that your eyes get to see. They're very minute little things, but they're lights that emanate and they're controlled by the word in the hard drive. And that word in the hard drive is holding them in place as long as that word in the hard drive wants them there. Okay, so that's, that's why it's when, when it says the Bible says that God sustains everything by the by the word of His power and all things were put together and assembled and, and sustained by Him, it's not hard for me to understand now. 
because we can only imitate what's already out there. We're not creating anything new. There's nothing new under the sun, says the Bible. We discover what's working outside, and then we implement it in our own little environment, in our own little world, and we see that it works because it works out there. So we're just discovering how things are being put together. In the world of holographic images coming, you know, where people are going to be seeing holograms instead of screens, it will be screens in 3 D dimension. We got the lights are emanating from one source and creating, creating a lifelike figure, you know, that looks 3 D. So all of that, we have all the technology, but all of that, all those points of light are being controlled by the word inside a hard drive. As simple as that. So the word has the power to hold things in place and reveal them in a certain way he wants to and change him anytime he wants to. And so, when Jesus was in the wilderness, he was defending the respect and the usefulness that people should have for the word. In those three temptations, you know, the devil was inviting Jesus to be there to use his status and the power as the Son of God to employ the word in the worst way possible. Remember, he was the word. and See, he's, he was the creator. The nature of the creator is to make, maintain, sustain, you know, and keep things whole. That's just, he loves to do that because he's the one that created, he's the only one that can make it work. So he takes the whole full responsibility of doing that. And so that's the best way to employ words, you know, to use them to, to build things up, to restore things. You know, that's why they encourage you to have an, encourage you to have an education and everything like that so that you will be able, you know, to give to this world the best employment that you can, you know, provide to the words that are residing in you. Put them in order, in the right direction, and there's no telling how far you can move in this world, uh, helping people and restoring things everywhere. But the worst employment you can give to words, having the creative engine, the one that sustains the universe, is to use that word just to be a beggar in this world. You know, just to learn the name of things. That's a camera. Okay, that's a camera so I can just grab it and use it. You know, this is a car. This is a car so you just come. I can just buy it and use it. You know, so you just be begging after getting those elements. Instead of learning how to make them and restore them and keep them new. That's the best employment you can give to the world. Because learning to, to keep things in order. Because everything has order and everything is kept by the word. Even... Even the word, uh, even even your flesh is kept by a word. You know, you have not thought about it, but the DNA is a code. A code is a word. It's a program written in acid in your body, and it's telling exactly how you should look, and it's maintaining that body coherent. So the DNA is a program. It's a word that is keeping this body in place. You gotta understand that the word is everywhere. You just because you know we don't speak its language, but it's there. So now we have understand, we have learned to decipher the word of our bodies as a fleshly body. So therefore, we can clone people now. You know, we can clone things. We can clone animals and people. But nonetheless, the DNA is the source code of everybody. And one DNA, they can make millions of me. You know, out of the DNAs that are found in my body. So it's amazing. Because everything it comes down to a word. And that's what we have discovered in this marvelous time in which we live in how much control the word has over everything so that was what jesus was emphasizing so in this world is not but a be we who are the only ones of all the creatures in this planet you know the animals the only ones that are endowed with the power to carry words you know and assimilate the wisdom that comes through the words you know to use those words just like like any mere animal or mere brute beast will do you know without reasoning and without el getting elaborate and you know, creating beautiful things and harmonious things. You know, that's 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 the great, uh, you know, status for which the soul was made to have that relationship with the divine. You know, and so Jesus was defending that that's the way the word should be respected. It should be respected because not the things created, because the things created came from the word. So everything that you see that is being created is pointing you to look at the word. You know, when you look at a camera. You should want to think, oh, how, I wonder how was that put together. So you go to the source, to the word that assembled it and told you how to put it together. And you fall in mean with the word. So therefore, the little object that you call camera that is found in the physical world will never be destroyed by you. It will only be made new and complete. Because that's the way to live. But sadly to say, that's not how things are encouraged in this world right now. 
Everything is encouraged to you as a product that you should seek to acquire for yourself. You know, no matter what. Because it's something that you need to be in the in crowd, to be part of a modern technology, quote unquote. And so everything is sold to you in order for you to get away from the love of the, uh, from the love of the order of words, which is to love instruction. Now, everything that we make that the word enables us to do, you know, we have to present it. Look what the word may be capable of doing. You can do the same thing also and invite him to join the fellowship of that joy of being in the spirit of the maker. But that is not seen anywhere, sadly to say. And that's what students forget that the, the, the best time you go to study and you get all those words for free, especially in America. This public education is free. So while you, while you get all that education for free, if you learn to love words, guess what? If you become an excellent student and excels, and excels in all your subjects, then they keep paying you for you to keep learning. You know, you, you get grants. You know, you get all kinds of programs that open their doors for you to become their students and you to continue to learn. And there's no end to that. You know, because once you own the world of words, you own the whole world of physical things because all the world of all the physical things have been placed before they are in the physical manifestation of this world they are in a book format they are in a manual they are made in words and so he who owns the words of all things is automatically the owner of everything that's why Jesus was said men shall not live by bread and only is not bread that feeds them but the instructions of the word that guides them and allows them how to live how to eat because he can have all the the food in the world, like America does. America has all the food in the world, you know, all the all you can eat buffets that you can think of, but yet the body's starving because they have not been taught what real food is. That minerals and nutrients those are the real foods found. And so they don't pay attention to what's on, you know inside the content of any of any food as long as it tastes good. They let their senses be their God. And like I told you before, what makes sense? makes the senses, but the senses don't make sense. So, you gotta remember that. So, there was Jesus therefore defending that, the importance of following the order of words because the order of words is what makes us useful and makes us make a living in this world. So it is written, it's a law, that's how it is, because the kingdom is his and he knows how he put it in order and he knows how he's going to work. So by keeping order of words, you are able to be useful in this world. And so he moved on to the second temptation also when the devil wanted to make him, make sure that the, the basic way you can use the word here is to protect your flesh, to protect everything that your flesh owes, you know, to get those guarantees, you know, all those insurances, you know. And Jesus says, the word of God does not need to be tested against that. He says that, you know, the word of God gave that promise that if he were to throw himself from up a, up a high place, uh, nothing was going to happen to him because there was a promise that he was going to take his angels to pick him up. You know, but Jesus just please said, also it is written, that shall not test the Lord like God. That's not a law. You're not going to test the manual. If something is written, you use, you trust the manual and you test the, the object that's been made against the manual to see that it lives up to its specifications. The thing created is tested to make sure it lines up with what the word says it should be. And the manual that say what things should be, that should be trusted. That's how that's a law, and that's how everybody does any industry of everything created. They bring it to the manual, trusting what the manual says is true, and testing that the product lives up to what the manual says it should be. So it is written, it's a law. That should not test the, the Lord thy God. And at the end, you know, when the devil show him all the productions of the world, you know, then again, uh, you know, and, and told him that. If he bowed to him, that means he bowed to his mindset that you're here to use the power of God to employ the word in the worst way, worst, uh, worst, uh, waste, I'm sorry, in the worst, I'm sorry, in the worst way possible, which is to go after things. You know, when you can be fixing them and making them better, that's better than to be in a position where you're begging and asking to have them. Okay? So basically what it comes down to, and the Lord gave me this thought this morning as I was walking, that's why I love to walk because a lot of my thoughts are put in order and the Lord opens up a lot of scriptures to me. And uh, well, basically I was thinking, you know, the, because the way, there's, the, the, there's two ways in which things can be found in the Word. All things created can be found in two ways in the Word. 
they will, I say they can be caused found in the surplus mode and they can be called in the I made up this word but in the suck more mode one is a surplus that means you have what you need for yourself and you have a lot of extra for everybody else and the other one is the suck more you know you don't have what you need for yourself and you want to suck and once you get it you want to suck more of it you don't get satisfied with just what Whatever you see that you get it, you want more and you want better things. So, if you're blessed by the word, you know, then the word sets you apart to be in the surplus mode. If you're cursed, remember the word blessed means if you're made strong. To bless is the word baruch, to be made strong. And the word cursed is the opposite of being blessed, which is to be made weak. Okay, so if the, if the word has chosen you to to make you a very strong person, a very strong soul in this world, you know, you're going to be in the surplus mode. The world is going to have you in the surplus mode. That means you're going to have whatever you need for yourself, you know, and always plenty for everybody else. But if you're going to, you know, you are cursed by the word. By the way, when you're cursed by the word, you actually love to be in that situation. Because when you uh, if you're cursed by the word, you, you, the word has chosen to be weak, then you'll be in the suck more mode. Now, what do I mean by that? Everything. Every name of every item in creation, you can do two things with it. When somebody gives you a name of something that's been created, there's two things that can happen. You can either learn to love the word that said how it was made, or you just learn the word of the name of that thing, so you will always just want that thing that was made by the word, and therefore you will be in the suck more because you don't have it inside of you. Like I said, there are two ways of having things. You can have things outside of you, like a camera can be outside of you, or a camera can be inside of you. And the way you can put the camera inside of you is by studying the manual that made it. And once that camera is inside your soul in the order in which the manual says you be put together, then guess what? You have that camera as many times as long as you can have it, and you can make more for others to have. So you have the surplus mode. Because it's better, like I used to tell my students, you know, if somebody will give you a car, you know, and one car, by having this car, you will be able to make cars for everybody that you wanted to. And if somebody else has another car, I will tell you, for this car, by the way, this car you can get it for free. It's free. Doesn't pay any money for that. You can get it for free, and you can get this car, and then you you cannot just have it for yourself, but you can share it with everybody. You know, uh, and if you have the other car, that you have to pay for it. But then you cannot give it to anybody else or make anything because it doesn't have the power to do that for you. It's, you can only have it and see it die before you. But this other one is always stays new. This other one never never gets bad, never gets old. It always stays new. And this one always gets old and it cannot multiply. This other one always stays new and it can multiply. And then, and this is free. And this you have to pay for. And I would ask my students, if that was the choice I was given to you to have a vehicle or any item in this world, you know, if you chose the one that always was kept new and had the power to multiply itself, would you be considered a very wise person or very stupid? And in a situation like this, the students will always say, well, that's a very, very smart person, very wise for choosing that. All right. But what if you are given the choice to have those two things and then you choose to say, I'm going to pay for the one that doesn't have the power to multiply itself and that can only get old and die on me. I'm going to work hard to get that one and just keep that one. So would this person be considered very wise or very stupid? And they will always say, this person is very stupid. Then I proceeded to explain to them, anything in this world that has been made, you can have it in the mode that I described for us, the surplus mode, in which, in a way in which I always kept new, you know, and it has the power to multiply itself. And by that I mean it's the knowledge of it. Everything has come from instruction. So there's the knowledge. Everything is in the knowledge format, the body made out of words, the volume that is written of that item that was being created. You internalize that, you learn that, and you memorize it, and you make it part of your being, and then guess what? 
then you're able to, fi to fix everything that is in the physical world that came out of all the cars and keep them going for everybody else. And because what you have is made out of words, it's always new because it's the, the standard by which everything is measured. And so you become the technician, and you become the dealer, you become the one that takes care of everybody else. And everybody else comes for you because you have that car. While you, the other one, if you don't acquire the knowledge, then you have to get the physical item that was created out of that knowledge. And that thing, all you can do, since you never learn the knowledge, you're going to see it die and being consumed by your, you know, by you, because you're only a consumer to it. You cannot construct it, you cannot create it, you cannot maintain it. That's all you can do. You have no choice but that. So that's basically what you need to understand. The employment of the word is what matters. Out of words, things have been assembled and put together. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the heaven showeth forth his farm, and the firmament showeth forth his handiwork. You know, everything that you see in creation is pointing that there is a creator behind it. And that's what you need to fall in love with. The creator behind the item that has been created, and not the item itself. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. The world has, the world has made fabulous things, but we should never fall in love with the fabulous things. But once something comes in the word format, it stays as the maker. Now, once that word format is applied to the physical, and the physical item is brought out of the dust, out of the materials of this world, that is like the dung, you see? Uh, the word came through your mind and made you move and assemble things together and then you put them out there. See, that's what's digested and your body made something out of the physical. So that's like, you know, it came out of you, you don't need it for yourself anymore. You know, it's, it's digested into your soul and now you're able to... So everything that comes out of you is like, to, to you is like dung. It's just like, you know, going to the bathroom and getting rid of it. You don't need it for yourself. Others can use it you know, to fertilize the ground or whatever thing, but you don't need it for yourself. That's how you need when you have knowledge. You can make things and you don't need to grab them to them because you can make them over and over again. You can always fabricate them. So there's no the, the bondage of ignorance that ignorant people have. Ignorant people, they don't know how to make anything, so they have to depend on what others have made. And then they're just hoping that it doesn't die on him, that he has warranty to last a long time. That's stupid. This is all the stupid people in the world. You know, and sadly to say, people want to be in that stupid category. So, that's what Jesus was defending in the wilderness. That we need to employ the word in a way that we're here to rule above all things. And by owning all the material, or, you know, by learning to love the order of words, we will be on top of all things all the time. But if you begin to put things above the order of words, guess what? You're always going to be in the bottom. You know, pretty soon, you're, no matter how great your generation was at some point, if you acquire that mindset, you know, you're just going to be, you're going to consume your own self. Because that's, that's what most people are doing right now. I mean, they're just dying for lack of ignorance, ignorant, I mean, lack of knowledge. The Bible says, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. So you begin to die when you don't have instruction. Everything begins to die. If you don't have the instruction on how to fix a car, the cars begin to die. If you don't have the instruction on how to feed your body, your body begins to die. You begin to get old. Sooner than you should. You know, I know a lot of people my age right now, 52. Their mustache all white. You know, most of their hair is, is, most, uh, is like halfway white. You know, look at me, 52 right now. And I'm looking skinny than a lot of teenage students that I used to have. So following words alone, and trusting where God is guiding me, we have to take care of everything, it has not hurt me one bit. But if you don't follow instructions, your same ignorance will kill you. Because when I follow instructions, all you can do is destroy. There's no way that you can say, I'm going to build this TV and I'm going to listen to the manual. I'm just going to do this in my own mind. You're only going to destroy it. As simple as that. You have to bow down to instruction and say, you know, I've got to love instruction so I can love knowledge and get some wisdom to be useful in this world, to be useful to God or man, to both of them. So I invite you to consider those things and to think on these things and make sure that your Jesus is a Jesus that rules that helps all things to be preserved, maintained, sustained, be made complete, which is what the meaning of salvation is. 
and not a Jesus that just sucks the benefits out of everything. I'll leave you with that today.